guys this is nishtha back with um, another episode at scholar strategy and today i have with me rafi alam who is pursuing his uh, masters in cs at university of waterloo it is one of the most competitive and uh, prestigious programs in canada and we get to chat about what is it like to study in canada and why should or should you not prefer it over let's say doing ms in usa so this is sort of like second in series of exploring the uh, non us option for your higher studies so uh, here i would like to welcome rafi and uh, i have a lot of questions for him so let's begin yeah, yeah hi rafi um, welcome you to the scholar strategy channel and i'm interviewing some of our ex students about their experiences so i am glad to welcome you here so uh, would you like to introduce yourself a bit uh, so hi i am rafi alam and uh, i did my masters in mathematics computer science major in university of waterloo in canada and i graduated last year in september and right now i'm working at nuance communications it's montreal uh, like i'm in on the montreal based location Mm -hmm. and i'm working as a software developer uh, in natural language processing thank you cool okay yeah i remember so you joined university of waterloo i believe in jan of 2016 right 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 so how long does it take to finish a masters there and can you quickly tell us about how intensive the curriculum is it is it is it thesis based and those kind of stuff uh, okay so i did the course work an option i did not do thesis i had a chance to switch to thesis um, in between the term but the thing uh, the thesis is just very exhaustive mm -hmm. so i continued my coursework because i didn't want to go to uh, do my phd right. so the course essentially is uh, you can do it in either three terms or four terms most indian people prefer three terms because it, you save for one uh, that money for one term yeah and uh, you can also do a internship or a co-op in between okay so i did a co-op of 8 months so i completed my course in total of 20 months okay yeah uh, so that co-op uh, was uh, an extension uh, of summer internship uh so here uh, the internships don't work uh, just in summer it works all around the year okay so i did my internship in uh, winter plus fall so fall plus winter essentially from september to april Okay. Yeah. Okay, got it. And and how did you like the course work? Do they do they have specializations like we have in in US? Like you can focus on one stream. What is you What is Waterloo best for? Uh, so in Waterloo for masters, I would say like if you wanna go for a PhD, yeah. Then they like almost all of the uh, like streams of uh, computer science are pretty good. Okay. Uh, and especially hci is coming up a lot and security is coming up a lot okay and uh, if you want to do just course work and get a job you, you you don't have really specialization except data science because a lot of people now want to go for data science yeah so for that you have certain particular courses but you can take those courses independently as well okay and course work wise uh, and I, i would say it's it's on the above like if you come from an indian university Uh, in which you have not done a lot of original work yeah you will have a little bit hard time here yeah definitely okay how many courses were you roughly taking per semester so i was taking uh, in the first term i took three courses but one courses was not counted towards credit okay and other terms i take three courses each so in total uh, nine courses out of which eight courses are counted towards a degree Okay, got it. So, um, so if you're doing coursework only, then you can finish roughly, as you said, in like three semesters or so. Is it a semester system? Yeah, uh, it's a term system. So it's a four month block. Um, so you complete okay. in within uh, in one year essentially. Okay. And what did you do yeah. in summer? Uh, so summer uh, here, summer is not off as a term. Uh, there is a summer term as well. Okay. So you were just taking courses in summer as well. Okay. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. And and how does the student visa system work there? What what can you do on the student visa? So student visa, you can uh, do TAs, of course, and yeah. you can also work. I think twenty hours 
outside of the university or something like that. Oh, okay. I didn't really explore the option. Yeah. But uh, like you can TA yeah, definitely. Yeah. But you were doing the co-op, right? So you did explore that thing. Uh, oh right, right. So co-op is uh, uh, you uh, when you apply for co-op. Yeah. So you have to get another visa called co-op visa, okay. which is like an automatically approval. Okay. So uh, I think I did that. So uh, what, uh, okay. So you get a letter from university that you are converted to a co-op program. Okay. And you send the letter to the visa office, and they give you the co-op visa. So there's no hassle in it. You once you have the offer from a company, you can get it pretty easily. Oh no, you don't need an offer from a company. You just need a letter from the okay. university that you are uh, uh, you are converted to a co-op program. That's all. So do they have any criteria? Like, can anyone get that? Uh, sorry, what? Do they have a stringent criteria on who they give it to, or is it pretty easy to get it? Uh, I think it's pretty easy to get it, okay. especially if you are working at a good university. That's right. pretty easy to get it. Yeah. And can you get it right from your first semester? Uh, you uh, actually you applied in the second semester, not the first. From the second semester, okay. So second, second I think that term, is yeah. like the CPT equivalent of uh, the US thing. Uh, no, I. So, yeah, oh, okay. I'm not very yeah. familiar with that. That's okay. But, uh, yeah. um, okay. Okay. Yeah. Now, now tell me, and is that how it works in almost all the universities in Canada? Right. Yes. It's okay. because you're federal. Oh, yeah. Okay. So let, let's talk a little bit about financial aspect. So can you tell us, like, how much did you end up spending in tuition and living expenses? How much is it, uh, and how to get assistantships and that kind of stuff? Right. So for me, the tuition was a seven k term. Okay. So essentially, I paid twenty one k in tuition uh, for three terms. Yeah. And then, uh, for in terms of scholarship, uh, I got my TA in all the terms. So the TA is around thirty six hundred a term. Okay. So around nine hundred fifty a month, something like uh, more than that actually nine hundred fifty a month, something like that. Yeah. So uh, TA covers your essentially your uh, rent and. Uh, kind of living it depends on how you live yeah. like some people were able to cover with this people like me spend a lot you know yeah. so it depends how you live but i think uh, ta covers a big chunk of your expenses okay and as per living uh depends on where you live you have houses from 400 dollars a month to like 900 dollars a month okay and so I, I always lived on the around the average uh places yeah. so i was pretty much okay and in the Amaram, the benefit is there are not many students yeah. and people have signed their, their leases yeah. so they they give their room for cheap prices so i live like very in very cheap at very good places okay so uh, that so living expense i would say if you party a lot and everything it around 1500 a month okay and if you live like normal lifestyle it's like maybe thousand a month okay okay and um, what other kind of assistantships are there and how many of your friends got the assistantship was what was there cases where people had to pay the full amount and because they did not get assistantship uh, okay. so uh, in my course there were only like 10 students yeah uh, okay. so in math so if, if you end up in department of master of mathematics yeah so there Nine, uh, I didn't see anyone who didn't get a TA. Okay. Everyone got a TA. But if you are in software engineering department, yeah, it's uh, like some people did not get their TA. Okay. So, but but in department, if you are end up in department of mathematics, the computer science department, you yeah. almost certainly they have a shortage of TA rather than you know. Oh, okay. So it depends on the department, yeah. but they are open to giving assistantships to master student as well. Yes, yes, okay. very much. And if you are a thesis student, you get both a teaching assistantship and a research assistantship. Yeah. So you, if you are in a thesis program, uh, like you are covered in terms of living expenses. Yeah. And and your like everything uh, because it's very generous. Okay. Uh, but it's uh, so. But it did not give you tuition waiver like it gives in some schools in US. Like if you uh, get no, I did not get okay. any tuition waiver. But I got some bursaries, so which covered my one term fees. Yeah. Okay. Okay. 
so overall for complete masters do you can you give a rough estimate of how much did you end up spending maybe in just in tuition uh so tuition was 20k but i i think so uh, for me let's say this that i only paid my living expenses okay your tuition got covered through because the because i got yeah i yeah. got all my tuition back in terms of pa and bursary yeah. okay um okay let's come to um, the internships scenario which is a big question right so you have told us about the co-op and you have told us that there's no formal summer internship as such uh you can do an internship so but internship doesn't really count to your degree so it's just okay. like you take a term off from university you say i'm not attending this term and you go okay. for an internship okay but do uh, how common is it do people do that uh so uh people do that yes people do that especially people who already have a green card okay so green card as in here it's called pr permanent yeah. residency so yeah. people or actually apply pr from india they get it while they are studying okay and then they do this uh, uh internship because uh, the real reason for doing this co-op for 8 months of internship for me was that uh the work permit the length of work permit depends on how much is the of the course uh how much is so, what i missed your voice there uh, Oh yeah, it depends on what is the length of your course. So let's okay. say you did a course for one year. Yeah. So you are eligible only for twelve months of work permit. Right. And work But permit is, means what? Yeah. Uh, sorry. Work permit means what? So work permit is like the OPT, I think, okay. equivalent of US. So like yes. after you graduate, how yeah. how much time you can work in Canada? Oh, I see. Okay, so that is variable depending upon the length of your course. Okay. <laughs> length of course. Yeah. So if you to a course less than 8 months you are not eligible for work work permit oh so people try to lengthen this time you know right. somehow to end up they take a term off you know right and generally speaking if you did more than one year yeah like let's say in months people get 3 years so 3 okay. years is the maximum okay so how much did people, you get i i got 3 years so i did okay. 20 months and i got 3 but i know people who did one year and got 3 years okay So it, it it all depends, but legally, yeah. like if you do one year, if they give you one year, like you can't say anything, you know. Okay, so it it's up People to their discretion. Then one. Yeah. Got it. Okay. Right. Yeah. Uh, and and is this so work permit is always this time limited thing, and within that you have to find the work visa. Is that right? Oh no! So okay. there is okay. this is the work visa. This is the, the work years. visa. Okay. Yeah. And what happens after that? Uh-huh. in so in the uh, in so in these 3 years uh, you have to what you have to do is you have to get your green card okay you have to get so your green card is okay uh, pr here yeah. permanent resident yeah. so i'll i'll okay. use that on pr from now now right. on for green card right. yeah and and how 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 long does it take to get the pr so it depends on the province you are living in so if okay. actually there is only option you sh- you Don't want to live in Quebec, where I'm living. You okay. know, <laughs> so except this province, every other place you will get your PR within a year. Okay. Yeah. So most of my friends are already who graduated one year ahead of me. They yeah. already have their PR, and next year they will get their citizenship. Oh, great. Okay. Okay, and so, for me, like I made a decision of enjoying myself in Quebec, in like Montreal. Yes. So I'm like, uh, uh, it will it will take me one extra year. Okay, and, and you have the work yeah. visa for three years anyway. Exactly. So I have I'm good till 2020, and if yeah. anything happens, I'll move provinces, and I will get the PR within six okay. months. You know. Okay. So there are ways around it. So okay. Exactly. Okay, I'm not going to get into the detail of the PR because that's not what this interview is about. But from what I'm right. understanding, it's pretty easy and within at least let's say 2 or maximum 3 years you can get it definitely definitely okay so that's a big advantage criminal record or something in your hmm, yeah yeah okay that's yeah. awesome uh, and how is the job scenario in canada so job wise internships are a little bit difficult to get as far as i saw so okay. in, especially during my term yeah uh, like i got my internship on the last day of the term it was like a very stressful uh, scenario okay and most of the people who get internships get through referrals rather than directly applying so okay. directly applying is not very fruitful okay and 
uh, so but the term after me a lot of people got selected to amazon amazon was hiding interns at a very i don't know like a lot of interns yeah so i think half of the like so there are only 10 15 people in my course and i think seven or eight got into got an internship okay and so one of two people struggled so they had to do an extra term just yeah. to you know lend them their course right. but they got internship so now they will complete it to it or something Okay, so eventually everyone got it, but it could be tricky and depends on external factors as well. Exactly, yeah. Uh, and but is this... The job is full, yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, go ahead. Right, so full, uh, in terms of full-time uh, jobs, I think like uh, compared to internships, yeah. they are much higher in number. Okay. And especially due to the coming up of a lot of startups, so some startups pay very less, but some startups pay like very high. Okay. So it depends on... Uh, like how, what's your caliber yeah so in full time i didn't see anyone struggles everyone got their full time okay. uh, i like before graduating 90 percent and 10 percent people who really were picky about which company they want to go to right they they, uh, they so they delayed themselves they got offers but they didn't go okay. so they delayed themselves to go to a particular kind of company and so but within four months of graduating they got their job yeah okay Cool. And, and when we are talking about these job offers, these internships, are they all Canada based only or uh, for example, was Amazon hiring for Canada or for US also? Uh, for US as well. So uh, okay. especially uh, big names like Twitter, Yelp, Google, uh, Amazon and Microsoft, not Microsoft actually, Amazon, yeah. they hire for their foreign offices. They, okay. they prefer rather you, if they have positions in Canada, yeah. they won't be Know, like go like you to US. Yeah. But I saw some people in my courses who join Twitter and Yelp in uh, California. Okay. And so you go for a visa called J1 visa. So yeah, J1 yeah, yeah. is a internship visa for US. Right. I think like I don't know if I got the right, uh, right yeah, number. Yeah, not but exactly, yeah. but yeah, yeah. Yeah. It has some restrictions of its own. Okay, so they are not giving H1 directly, but they are finding other ways to get you. Oh no. Not H1 directly. Not H1. So H1. H1 is hard to get if you study from Canada. So that is something one should be aware of. Uh, so H1, if, if you uh, study in Canada, it's, the H1 process is the same as India. So you are considered citizen of India and okay. then the process right. goes from there. Right. Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, so, but like the how, how's the overall the tech scene in Canada? Is it improving? Do you think like there is going to be, how's the job scenario looking to you in like, ne let's say next five years or so? Uh, so for me, I think like uh, it's it's looking good, especially given the uh, tech environment here. Like a lot yeah. of bonuses to startups and these kind of things. So there are a lot of incubators here. Yeah. And uh, Google is expanding their office space. Because it's opening a new office. Amazon is hiring like crazy right now. Okay. Like two positions open. And uh, Microsoft bought some startups here. So they have this especially if you're in machine learning and all, there are too many jobs. Okay. If you are in data, you want to become a data engineer or anything, Yeah. like Canada right now has a lot of open positions. But if okay. you want to go in a normal backend or something like that, which is what I am doing, yeah. it's, it's kind of tough because most of the people want to get here. You know, So I'm, I'm, I'm already doing some courses to change my field to something that is more attractive. Oh, okay. So... Uh, it's all your personal development, like you, it's uh, in our world, things change very fast, so you have to be just, you know, updated, I guess. Okay, okay. So, but you never felt stressful about the whole job hunt scenario and the visa thing? Uh, no, I did not. Like, I've been lucky to get, uh, so except the internship, which was as like I got on the last day yeah. of my term. And so, uh, like in full-time job, I got it pretty early. Okay. And like, I enjoyed my summer a lot, so like. And how much was, did the uh, university resources help you in job hunt? No. You are yeah. like, if you're a master's student, don't yeah. rely on your Oh, okay. Yeah. So it's all your network and all your efforts. Right. Yeah, it's, it's all on you because uh, university might even, you know, like stop you. Like it's very like different scenario here. Like oh. so they, you are in a course program yeah. and your co-op program is different from the undergrad co-op program. So in undergrad co-op program they actually help you to get uh, jobs yeah but masters don't have access to that particular co-op program okay yeah okay and so when when you say that amazon was hiring and all 
was it coming right. to the campuses to hire or it was just a external thing that anybody uh, could go to both okay both. so like they do a campus thing yeah uh, in which you get exam it's like a 30 minute exam and then you get the interview and all yeah but let's say you were not in the campus that day or something so you did directly apply to amazon then and okay. hope for the best yeah. okay uh, do do you, do you have like big career fairs kind of thing in there Oh, sorry. Uh, do you have big career fairs like we have in US? Career fairs, uh, we have career fairs, but I don't think so that any big name companies visit in those career fairs. Okay. Yeah, so like mostly these companies are like mostly startups or mm-hmm. like not very known. So all the large companies, they are like all the big corporations, you might you want to apply directly to their website. That's the best way. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, and so you want to go to the info session for, for the first month of term because yeah. they, like I just want to give this information. So the f- first thirty days of your term, yeah. every every company from like the the company you can think visits the campus. Okay. So you go to their HR, you get their email address, and you mail your mail your resume to them. Definitely, or hand in your resume. Okay. So yeah, more than hundred companies with all all the like best names you can think of. Everyone comes to Waterloo. Okay, got it. Um, and in terms of this work permit that you have or the work visa in Canada versus H-1B, so like H-1B has a lot of restriction, like right, what kind of streams can you like, you know, get a H-1 in, um, like marketing companies will not give out H-1 easily. Is it the same thing in Canada or is it open to any kind of role? Okay, so in, in, in US, I understand that you have to get sponsored for H-1B or something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. So, no, not here. So, not the work permit, you get the work permit as a kind of automatic response to your master's. Oh, so, okay. you did your master's here, you get a work permit which is known as postgraduate work. Okay. Because I studied there, we are giving you an opportunity to work here as well. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, overall in terms of like different streams, so, so um, what I'm getting is that the scenario is looking pretty rosy for uh, tech-related fields, for data-related fields. Um, overall, do you think, um, uh, which streams would you not recommend applying to Canada? Is, is there any such thing? Uh, I would say, like, you know, if you don't already have contacts in engineering, don't apply, like, uh, because I didn't know many people in engineering who got the job, Yeah. like, ele- are doing an electrical or civil yeah like really know what jobs you have because uh, the info sessions that were happening yeah. so there were 30 days every day let's say three four companies yeah. so around 100 companies or 120 companies will visit out of which 100 are tech companies and okay. 20 are if you are so there, there is like this tesla thing going on hyperloop or so yeah. if you are like you know you are tesla level guy yeah. you, know, you think you can do mechatronics electronics yeah. as well mechanical you may have like then you have some so 100 companies are tech pure tech yeah and 20 are fintech or uh, mechanical plus electronics okay so, so yeah. in other branches it's still not clear and one should one should find out more information uh, in like yeah, in, so yeah because i really don't know what yeah. kind of jobs yeah. other teams have okay uh, but even in us i heard from my friends who went for mechanical that yeah it's it's same thing yeah yeah it's, it's hard okay um so uh so and, and yeah uh, let's talk about the salaries a bit right because i was talking to uh sangram who's studying in germany and there are a lot of like pros of graduating from there and the job situation there is uh, pretty good as well uh, okay. uh, the only downside he mentioned was the salary is definitely not at the level of us so what is it like in canada so same thing, it's not at the level of US, definitely. Uh, so it depends yeah. on which company you go to. So if you go to Google or Amazon or uh, any big name, hmm. so it depends on how you negotiate, how much experience do you have. Yeah. So I saw some people working on the 90 range and, okay. and I saw some people who got one ten off the start okay. and also the location. So there are three primary locations mm-hmm. like Vancouver, yeah. Toronto and Montreal. Okay. So Vancouver is living wise the most expensive place. Okay. So the salaries here they're like 
if you are getting than 85 or something like you are living like not living properly you know okay it's that you know okay so most of the companies there go above 80 like i'm talking just about the base salary yeah. not the bonus and yeah. stocks because that depends on the person and how you negotiate yeah uh, in terms of joining bonus uh, not m- most of the companies don't give joining bonuses here like us in us oh, you get okay. a fat joining bonus yeah. in like most of the companies yeah so here that's not the case okay with all the companies again it goes only to google amazon that's it not even microsoft okay so uh, the most joining bonus i heard here was around 30k or 40k okay. uh, payable over two years yeah and the general joining bonus is 5 to 10k that's it okay. salary wise so in toronto the average going rate is around i would say 80 to 100 yeah vancouver 210 montreal okay. Uh, 80 to 95. Okay. Okay. So that's. So, uh, and are these Canadian dollars or are you talking about equivalent of no, Canadian dollars? No, I'm talking in Canadian dollars. You're talking Nothing in Canadian, Canadian dollars. So 80 Canadian dollar is, anyways, I would say how much? Like 70 US dollar or something? Yeah, 100 to 77. Yeah, 77 cents per dollar. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Okay. Okay. So that that is mainly the, the downside of it. Uh, sorry. So, so that is the primary downside. If I have to right, right. compare, so if, right? If, if you only want to work in North America for let's say five year, collect hundred k and go back home. Yeah. I would suggest please go to US because right. then you, you know, like because some people actually I know some people who actually want to go back to India. Yeah. yeah. And but if, if 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 you are thinking that I want to make a permanent move to North America because. A lot of people, when they live this life, yeah. they don't want to go back to India. Yeah. So I know them as well. Yeah. So I would suggest that then you really should consider Canada as well because yeah. you will be, become a citizen within four or five years. Right. You can actually have this North American life. Yeah. You know, in Canada, like quality of life is way, way better than US. In US, okay. you will be alien for like 20 years. Yeah. And here you will have real privileges. So okay. uh, I think depends on what your goals are. Yeah. You know, so most people I have seen like even myself as well. So like uh, money was like the right, money is the goal. Yeah. Uh, rather than anything else. So you choose your streams depending on money. You choose everything depending on money. Yeah. But uh, I, I think once you are doing masters, uh, so you should choose a little bit of that, you know, I, I, what makes you happy and choose the place according to that. Right. Yeah. So you should okay. consider this happiness level to your, you know, decision as well. No, I completely agree. That's what I encourage students. But I know in that, in that stage, you're primarily looking at money. That is the first question they right. have. But yeah, I, I think they have their own eye opening as, as they start studying and all. Uh, plus, plus, I think the health insurance, the health cost, and the other things are also significantly better in Canada, right? Right, free itself. So, like yeah. for me, health insurance, I have a health card, and I just go in and it's free. Yeah. Which is like such a big thing because in US, I've seen uh, a, a single dental visit or something can be super expensive. Right, yeah. yeah, yeah. Right. Uh, okay, Rafi, so what is your one line summary of the whole thing? I know uh, why did you choose Canada, and uh, I know you've kind of given the answer, but would you like to just summarize your whole experience? Uh, so I would say, uh, as per my experience, I loved Canada. I like. Uh, I was kind of afraid of the winter, but in yeah. five days we get used to it. It's not. <laughs> It's nothing called bad winter, it's something called bad clothes, so you know, <laughs> you have the right clothes, you are good to go. Yeah. And uh, as per my experience, I have been like fall in love in, for skiing, I learned swimming here, I learned skiing, like I'm still learning stuff, I'm learning dragon boating, so like okay. physical activities, it's a whole new world, you actually I train on the same mountain as Canadian Olympians, okay. so it's, it's a crazy world out here, you know, yeah. you have this thing opportunities as everyone else yeah and uh, as per education education is very high quality like same as you yeah actually like same as the top u.s universities right. not the uh, not even the average, average yeah. ones and uh, after that it's uh, where you want to go how you commit so like yeah. opportunities less uh, depends on the personal caliber right 
if you want to make money a lot of money please go to us like okay. if that's the only thing because yeah. uh, us is giving out crazy amount of money and if yeah. you're single right now yeah right, right. okay that sounds uh, that sounds awesome rafi so i think i am done with all my questions uh, what yeah. i will do is one once i post it and sometimes there are follow up questions so i'll reach back to you and oh, if, no and if you think you have uh, if any other important point comes to your mind then just send it my way and i will right, post sure. it on our group or something so yeah, sure. thank you so much thanks on behalf of all the students so i'll stop the recording and i'll continue chatting with you my pleasure